controls the shell temperature antenna base shell temperature between 22 degrees to 28 degrees uh, we have a AC curve lights over there so if goes beyond 28 degree antenna will stop working it alarms first it in uh, when it alarms starts alarm at after 28 degree it will wait up to reach up to 30 31 degree and after 30 31 degree antenna will stop at uh, its working and it shuts down all the systems there mesh material is a uh, stainless steel it's a mesh is uh, stainless steel uh, steel material where Hmm. Oh. We have AC installed at antenna base line. You can see this uh, tower is there, concrete tower. That tower uh, is uh, inside that there is a system again. So that ACs are there, some electronics are there, some uh, safety, all these uh, control and sentinel systems are there. Servo racks are in place, delimited racks are in place. Also, electricity and all uh, ACs are also there. So, everything is uh, inside that concrete tower. And it is shielded. That concrete tower contains a mesh, uh, Faraday cage, that is surrounded by, so that internal and external. Uh, interferences can be avoided. Uh, high wind is again a critical parameter. So, wind speed goes high. There uh, is a, it's a limit of 45 km per hour. It waits for some manual intervention. If nothing happens, it waits for 10 minutes maximum. And then antenna decides to park itself. Then electrical power is also we have to monitor because most of the time it's in rural area. So there are most of the time power shutdowns are in place. So we have to monitor this. We have electrical backup as well, our own. We have provided digital generators for that and UPS power as well, but we have limitations on that. So it is useful parameter to uh, monitor whether we are running on genset or electrical power supply from uh, uh, electricity board. So intruder alarm is again an important parameter to use here. Panic alarm. Panic alarm is uh, provided because people are going there at antenna which is at remote place and people are working sometimes they are not feeling healthy so they may in encounter some animals there so wild animals are also there some snakes will be there so as this is uh, very remote we have to take care of this and if they found something that is uh, emergency so they can press that panic alarms and uh, call the control room like so that action can be taken and uh, support can be provided to them. Is that intruder? Hmm. Is that all fence or something? Intruder is the it's a abrupt change you know, something is a automatically abruptly is going to happen there. So that is uh, taking action itself. So these are again, uh, I talked earlier about this critical and less critical parameter. So temperature, smoke, fire, high wind, these are panic alarms of critical. And if power failure is there, it's okay. So we can run on genset and UPS, but we have to act on that after certain limit. So there is no such, such rush, okay. and intruder is again less critical. So 
mostly control room action can be taken on less critical parameters or in on critical parameters and enter acts on itself. So this is the critical parameter block diagram, how it is working. So we have LM35, sorry. We have LM35 temperature sensor to monitor temperature and smoke and fire detectors in place, which communicates to the signal analyzer. And this signal analyzer is again provided with DCP IP to co communicate with control group via optical fiber and it is again provided with local alarm at antenna so that again buzzers if something goes wrong so that signal analyzer is connected to the driver uh, solid state relay which acts on electrical power distribution mode which can uh, stop antennas working the next, this is the block diagram for less critical parameters. This is control, motion sensors are in place, magnetic door sensors are there. So if doors get open or it keeps open by some accident or by mistake, it monitors that. So motion sensing infrared sensors are there. So that are again fed up to the signal analyzer, communicated to the control room via optical fiber, local alarm. It again takes the inputs from three phase from electricity power. Then camera is there and digital generator. <coughs> These are again important to monitor the electrical things. Camera is in place because we have to monitor the antenna safety. So this that is provided there whether who is going in, going out. Then motion sensors are there again. Then basic sensors used on these are the basic sensors used like solid state relay. Then smoke detector, magnetic door sensors, and this is the alarm, buzzer, and this is IR sensor. This is uh, the circuitry we have used for monitoring this sentinel system. So we are taking inputs from high wind from wind meters then temperature monitoring, PIRs, then smoke and do the power generator set, then set is the planning buttons, all these inputs are placed on that card and that is connected to the control room. So this is the, this is how the antenna shell uh, sentinel system is implemented. So F I uh, will start with A. A is the electronic slack. So these are the electronic slack. Then B is the uh, elevatory system slack. C is the signal analyzer. It takes the input from uh, temperature uh, D, E and F. Then acts depending upon the action signal moves to G. And Again, it is sent to control room with alarm detection. Then smoke detector is with, uh, mentioned by H and receiver electronics rack is I. And this whole uh, concrete tower is uh, covered by Faraday cage. Also, this blue square is a Insulation wall, so thermal thermo insulation is also provided there. So if you go inside, there is a very low temperature, about 18 to 20. So as I mentioned earlier, so this is a basic uh, 
in general, the electronics sentinel monitoring tool where we are observing and monitoring these parameters from the electrical system. We can monitor the temperatures at various labs from then really. And these are antenna wise status for electricity, temperature, smoke, whether ABC link is on, whether communication is on or off, and whether it is communicating properly or not. That has to be synced with this kind. So Sentinel system for high lift platform vehicles. So these are the high lift platform vehicles you can see at in front of antenna. People can go out there in the prime focus on the antenna. So there are prime electronic circuitry. Right? Whatever the radio frequency rates are collected from these, which are collected there, and focus and will send to the, down to the electronic side, the base, and then it will send to the main electronics building and uh, via optical fiber. So, this is used for a remote site working. People have to go there, uh, fix their jobs and come down on it. So that is very important and crucial thing while maintaining the antennas. So we have used IOP based sentinel system for this and uh, it contains the protected doors authorized entry to the cable of the vehicle. Then fire and smoke inside the cable, vibration sensors are on. It is protected with the battery. So, so again there is some signal. Circuitry is there So that you can protect the battery. IoT is Internet of Things. And we are using the Internet to make this signal analyze and transfer the messages. Uh, it's a cloud control over the Internet. We can control and monitor from anywhere actually. So that card is there and it saves and acts. Protected, sorry? Protected the battery, what does it mean? If someone's trying, these uh, vehicles, suppose uh, some people go at the antenna for doing their maintenance work, fixing up jobs, and somehow they uh, couldn't able to complete at the end of day. So they can't uh, get the vehicle back. They have to leave that vehicle over there because that vehicle is big and considering the traffic and road situations, it is not uh, that much worthy to go next day again. So people leave that vehicle over there and that's why we have designed this sentinel system for this vehicle. So it controls and monitors uh, everything for that vehicle. So surrounding environment can also be monitored by cameras. There are cameras installed, passive infrared sensors are there. Then uh, spare wheel. Because it is a remote place, people try to steal theft that we have to protect actually. I'm coming to that. So it is equipped with GPS again. So if someone tries to steal the vehicle, uh, whole vehicle, then it has a GPS installed within it. Then audio alarms are there also. Some suppose there are three, four homes nearby. So 
maker can shout when people are surrounding, living there, can wake up with this, whether what is going to be there. Or next. This is a block diagram actually. So this is the master control unit. It is provided with wireless modem which connects to the internet cloud and sends the SMS then messages to the uh, data servers and even your laptop if it is configured. So we have four or five entries configured for this. Uh, some numbers are there. So that numbers get messages from the, if something is going to be happen. So door sensors are there, main sensors, battery sensors, variable sensors, uh, it's playing mystic, sorry. Then vibration sensor, uh, ER sensors are there, smoke sensors are there. So this whole unit communicates via wireless modem to the internet cloud and it sends the messages. If someone tries to steal the vehicle, someone removes the battery, vehicles are, uh, wheels are being removed, or any suspectable entries are detected by infrared sensors, then it gives the alarm and messages will be sent to the registered numbers. Yes. Yeah. At some level, yes, because we are again dealing with the radio frequencies, we are, uh, and these are again the GPS signals which are in the band of 900 to uh, 1100. So. This will affect to some extent, uh, and uh, also we from 8:50 to 9:30, some GPS signals and uh, that mobile signals are already affecting us. So this will be not that much uh, affecting because that band anyway we are almost uh, putting as a uh, uh, flag data for astronomical users. What you okay. Next is the protocol. So engineers and technicians will go will have a vehicle accompanied with a driver during daytime and security with proper lightning aids is provided during the late hours. If some engineers and technicians will go late night, they have emergency work. So this will be helpful to all that. First aid kit is always there with the vehicle. Doctors and hospital numbers are also provided with the vehicle, the dashboards, and even with drivers also. Then. <coughs> Availability of local resident security persons are on remote sites. So we have identified some persons which will stay there for some duration. They will act as a security persons for that time you know. And it will they will inform us. Yes. The alarm facility is also available. in case of emergency. We also designed the Sentinel system for observatory building itself. So there various labs are there. So each lab is doing various different tasks. So that has to be a uh, very important thing to protect it as well. So we are again monitoring temperature, humidity, smoke and fire. Surveillance cameras are in place and panic alarms 
the steps are also there. So it's, it's functionality wise it is mostly same. So this is how the summary is. We have used a new technology for this one IoT. It is very simple and hardware design approach. Fully integrated with sensors and cameras in a single model. Then instant communication with smartphone, iPad, laptop, server. Then free and open source softwares are used for this. It is very easy to learn and implement. And we have rapid application development approach we have used so that anyone can take on this. So these are the references. Okay, thank you. Any questions? No? By seven. Uh, if the, we have a six months working cycle, so in that six month working cycle, antennas are completely used for astronomical observations. After six months, we have 15, 15 20 days downtime in which we have to do regular maintenance and system checks and uh, safety measures again. Uh, for various systems so that next six months can be operated without any failure. So, what have you observed? These are the radio antennas. Yes. Yes. Uh, how long is it working from 2002? Right? Uh, it is in since the moment. What are the results that we have? Uh, we have searched some pulsars. Some galaxies, new form, newly formed galaxies are there, and some twin stars. It's uh, uh, some year back we have found a supernova burst. We have recorded it live, actually. Yeah, and we have recorded it while when it was bursting. So that supernova burst was recorded, and it was a major strike to the. Yes. Sorry. And that will require more time on this actually. So that will be very deep. So that is sort of some electronics and all. I haven't gone into various deep things. It is just a overview of this system. Yes. We have around two twenty persons working there, from considering NCRA as well as GMRT. <coughs>
epsilon of protein is reacting as seen from the source. Suppose the source is just rising and there are two antenna 100 meter apart, it will not see 100 meter, it will see actually zero. It's just rising there. If the source is in the middle of the sky, it will see 100 meter. So as the source rises and sets, distance between antenna is actually different. So different distance is actually helping us because the distance between two antenna is kind of sampling the source sizes. For example, I am a Tamil. There are so many people that I want to love only make friendship with only Tamil. It's kind of funny way of telling, but the distance between this antenna is related to what kind of angular size scale that the interpreter is going to see in the star. See, you want to actually have antennas 25 kilometers spread all over. This is impractical. This is also a big reason for that. So that way, if you have so many antennas east-west, Zero, so 100 meter, 75 meter, as the source rises and sets like the return, redundancy, duplication of power. So you don't want to have the east west area, all the antennas are in east west, because there are duplications happening 50 meter, 50 meter, 50 meter, 75 meter, 75 meter, 75 meter. So you don't want to have that. You rather want to be economic. So you spread them not exactly east, but slightly inclined. So that way, the distance between them are varying with time. So you are trying to recreate and feel with economically minimum number of antenna and maximum sampling of the 25 kilometers. That is the reason it is arriving in that kind of thing. But that is the old technology. Now actually people are computer simulation and trying to create what is the best possible way to distribute this antenna to create a huge synthetic antenna. So now we are actually thinking of spiral like structures. They are not why like thing. American DNA and DMRT is actually worse. American DNA is three railway tracks, straight line at that. They pull the antenna in, they pull out the antenna. But DMRT is fixed on the ground, huge structure. Wherever land was available, there the antenna will pull. Roughly wide, not exactly. 